The rules in describing archives, a content standard, DAX, are based on eight principles. This training describes those principles. The principles in DAX fall into four categories. One, the nature of archival holdings. Two, the relationship between arrangement and description. Three, the nature of archival description. And four, the creators of archival material. It is crucial for you to understand the nature of archival materials in order to adequately arrange and describe them. Archival collections are the natural result of the activities of individuals and organizations. This creates a distinctive relationship between the records and archives and the activities that created them. Principle 1 highlights the interrelatedness of archival materials and states that records and archives possess unique characteristics. Because the materials were brought together through a natural process of aggregation, even if they contain published or mass-produced materials, the archives remain unique as an aggregate unit. This is different from the library world, where items are what are unique. In an archival sense, it is the aggregation of materials that is unique. Principle 2 states that respect de fond is the basis of archival arrangement and description. Respect de fond requires us to keep together materials that were created, assembled, accumulated, and or maintained and used by an organization or individual and to retain the document's original order. The first part of this principle, keeping materials together but separated by creator, is known as provenance. For example, if we received a collection of the personal papers of BYU President Benjamin Clough, according to the principle of provenance, we would not intermix these with the records of Brigham Young Academy or of the university. Each set of records would be maintained as separated archives or collections according to its creator. The second part of respect, de fond, involves keeping materials in the order in which they were received and is called original order. Original order helps preserve the internal relationships between the different component parts of the collection. By applying the concept of respect, de fond, to the materials being processed, we are able to preserve their authenticity and value as evidence. If it is not possible to observe respect de fond, processors need to create a usable order that will allow researchers to use materials. It then becomes incumbent on processors to document the changes that are made to the materials in the course of arrangement. It is also important for you to understand the relationship between arrangement and description. Arrangement is the intellectual and or physical process of organizing archival materials. Description is the process of recording information about the arrangement of archival materials and the context of their creation. Principle 3 states that arrangement involves the identification of groupings within the material. The first step in archival arrangement is to identify these groupings as they were established by the creator. These major groupings may then be subdivided to the level described. The uppermost grouping or level of arrangement is the collection itself. Major divisions within the collection, typically termed series, can often be identified by the nature of the materials. The series may then be divided into subseries, which can then be redivided into component subseries if necessary. Within a series or subseries, the next level of arrangement is the files, which may be any number of folders in size. Each file should contain a group of documents related by topic or use. Then, Finally, within the folders are individual items, the lowest level of arrangement possible. Within any given collection, you may see many of these levels, though they may not all be represented in every instance. Our major goal is to reveal the natural hierarchy of the materials and gain intellectual control of their contents. This is not always possible. In those cases where there is no apparent order, the processor may need to either reconstruct a lost order or impose their own order on the materials. In such cases, it is important that the previous state of the records be documented. Once a collection has been adequately arranged, its contents must be described. 
Principle four simply states that description reflects arrangement. If you have arranged the materials into two series, you will describe two series. If the materials have been arranged into three series with one of the series broken into subseries, then you will describe two series at the series level and one series at the subseries level. The next set of principles in DAX explains the nature of archival description. Principle five states that the rules of description apply to all archival materials regardless of form or medium. As you may have experienced, when you get into an archival collection, you may find many different documentary forms and record formats, including corporate records, electronic documents or audiovisual files on CD and DVD, personal correspondence, and other types of materials. DAX provides guidance on how to describe these materials as aggregates. If you are doing item level work, you will need to refer to companion standards. Nearly every format has its own companion standard that should be used for doing the physical description of an item. Principle 6 states that the principles of archival description apply equally to records created by corporate bodies, individuals, or families. Principle 7 states that archival descriptions may be presented at varying levels of detail to produce a variety of outputs. As we already saw in Principle 4, a collection can be described either as single-level records with information about each component or as multi-level records that incorporate hierarchy. In developing these descriptions, however, there are three things that we need to watch out for. The first of these is given in Principle 7.1. Levels of description correspond to levels of arrangement. Archival description is often an ongoing process, just as arrangement work may be iterative. For example, when we receive a collection, we describe the materials as an aggregate at the accession level. Later, during processing, these records may be arranged into two series and further description may take place. If we later get an accrual to the collection and end up adding a series, then we will need to revise our description to match the current arrangement. If we later did some additional processing and arranged series three into three subseries, this would also lead to additional descriptive work. The next principle, 7.2, states that relationships between levels of description must be clearly indicated. As we have seen, part of the power of archival materials is the context between the documents themselves, and these relationships need to be documented in our descriptions of the materials. This means that our descriptions need to make clear that this file is part of the series or that this item is part of this file. With single level descriptions, this can be done through pointers or references. With multi-level descriptions, these relationships are part of the record itself, with subcomponents of a description embedded in the description of the parent component. The last point that we need to keep in mind is principle 7.3. Information provided at each level of description must be appropriate to that level. Looking at two components of a multi-level description in this example, we can see that the collection level title, date, extent, and scope note is specific to that level. In describing the aggregate as a whole, it is not appropriate to include descriptions of specific subcomponents of the materials. Looking now at an item from that series, the information here is specific to the item. While this seems fairly obvious, its application is complicated by the concept of inheritance used in the preparation a multi-level archival descriptions. So, looking again at our example, if this was taken from a multi-level description, the reason these descriptive elements would be included at this series and item level is that the information that they hold is different in each case. This is usually true of titles, dates, and extent elements. However, with other elements such as access and use notes or language notes, the information from higher series level may be the same as at the lower item level. In these cases, those elements are not provided at the lower level and are assumed to have been inherent from their parent. The final principle given in DAX, number eight, states that the creators of archival materials, as well as the materials themselves, must be described. By recording information about creators, we are providing additional context for understanding the materials themselves. Looking once more at the example, when we know who David Waters is, 
that he is a family historian interested in the Waters family personal papers. We can better understand why the materials have been gathered, and perhaps how they were selected. The importance of this context is equally relevant for corporate bodies and families. By understanding creators and maintainers of records, we will be better able to understand the materials themselves. In the future, creator records may also provide useful access points for provenance-based searching. If you have any questions, please consult your curator.